thought, I really were thinking more on the lines of long term, because I'm going to follow my stocks, you know, throughout the school year. But uh, I don't know, it kind of did pretty bad. The first stock I bought was Caterpillar. Um, it's a constructional company. It's uh, pretty much the only constructional company that anybody really knows. Like, you know, if, if, if you're driving around and you see one of those big yellow tractors in front of you, it usually says Caterpillar on it. And, uh, no, we're not there. <laughs> um, next stock I bought was JetBlue. Uh, the reason I bought this stock is because it's an up and coming airline. And during 9 11, it showed relative strength by being the only airline that didn't really lose money. So I figured, hey, you know, they didn't lose money during 9 11. What are they really going to lose money? But uh, that was a lie, too. They lost a lot. Um, other stock I bought was Avalon Correctional Facilities. I bought that stock by accident. Because when I was typing in the stock symbol, I spelt it city, C-I-T-Y, when I meant to buy Citibank. Um, it was kind of a, an honest mistake. But you know, I went along with the stock because it was, you know, it was a penny stock. So I figured you know, it's either going to uh, make me a hell of a lot of money or I'm going to lose a lot of money. Uh, yeah, so I lost. <laughs> um, <laughs> Pfizer I bought because I, I bought Pfizer. There's a very interesting reason why I bought this. I bought it because they make Viagra. Now, listen. Okay, I'm not, I'm not trying to be disgusting here. But, you know, a lot of people are realizing nowadays that, you know, Viagra is a real thing with Rafael Palmero doing advertisement for him and, you know, saying, hey, I take Viagra, why can't you? I'm famous. I'm, I'm coming out and saying it. Also, uh, you know, this time of year, people start to have babies because, you know, a lot, everyone wants that summer child, that summer baby, you know, so they play the extra year of Little League, you know, have the nice summer birthday parties, pool parties. So a lot of people are going to be using Viagra. Um, General Electric was my other stock. Now this one I just bought because I woke up one morning, I was putting something in my microwave, and I was like, hey, it's General Electric. <laughs> I'm like, if, I, if I use this microwave, uh, you know, there must be millions of other people that use them. This is a uh, graph of, well, of Caterpillar's, what Caterpillar did over the three month period I owned it. As you can see from the beginning, it was uh, kind of even. Now, don't don't think because it goes up and down like that, it's doing bad. It's just really, you know, 79, 78. It's got to look close to the graph to understand what's going on. But it went up, down, up, and down, and down. But it pretty much stayed even. It was uh, actually one of the only two stocks that made me money. Uh, I ended up with positive earnings of $2,000, and uh, $2,000, $266.90. Yeah, well, I didn't say it right there, that's what I ended up with. Um, for the next slide, please, sir. Now we're starting to get into the losers. Here's my Avalon Correctional Services, which did nothing for me. Uh, even though I pretty much stayed around the same area, I bought it at 151. It stayed around 155, 160 the whole time until it just decided to go down and down. Until I ended up selling it around 145. So yeah, this stock really didn't do nothing for me. General Electric uh, was one of my big losers. Uh, I thought this stock was going to do well because it's a blue chip and you know it's, it's pretty much been here the whole time. It's been around for a while, uh, but as you can see, it didn't. It lost a lot of money, uh, which probably made my uncle Vladimir roll around in his grave when he saw these stocks going down. But you know, it's the risk you take when you you know you invest in the stock market. Here's my buddy Jeff Blue. Uh, this stock I thought was going to make money, so I invested a lot of money in it, but it didn't. Uh, you know, there's a lot of news going on. It was doing very well in the beginning. I was, I was very happy. I, I thought I was going to catch B. I thought I was going to beat him, get my free dinner. But then the stock split, and this is I was like, oh, it's great. You know, I get to multiply my shares by 1.5 because it split three to two. So the problem was. After the stock split, it just kept going down. It would go down five dollars a day, and two dollars a day, a dollar a day, and it just created a problem, which caused me to lose that six, seven, one, two. You know, I see that red figure down there. Big problem. Yeah. <laughs> this is my overall chart of the. Uh, that's upside down. 
of the uh, this great experience that I had. Oh, I have one more. Wait, do I have? <laughs> this is Pfizer. This was my uh, my sex drug company, and uh, this stock pretty much stayed the same the whole way until uh, there was a little lawsuit that went on by people saying, you know, the video might not actually work, and and there might be another name for it. And, People were complaining all that nonsense, but they, they worked it out. So it pretty much stayed, stayed even. I ended up made, making uh, $1,300 on this stock, which made me happy since all the other ones I lost money on. This is my overall chart of the, uh, the experience. And as you can see, I'm pretty much around the uh, $100,000 $100, range the whole time. You know, I fluctuate over, drop down, come back over, drop back down, and eventually I stay down. <laughs> it happens though. This here is the uh, final report, as you can see up there. Um, only two stocks, again, made money, which is very upsetting because I wanted to win. Um, but, you know, losing $5,500 really isn't that big a deal. <laughs> um, now, a lot of you are probably wondering again, like, how. Oh, Caterpillar. How do you come up with a name with that? Well, I also contacted my grandfather, who he invests a lot of money in the stock market, so I figured he'd know what he was talking about. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of mad at him now. <laughs> but I, call, I called him up, and I was like, you know, Grandpa, what do you think I should invest in? He said, well, you, you want to invest in those stocks that have been here a while. You want to, you know, try to find a nice blue chip that's going to make some money. Instead, he kind of, you know, he tossed these dogwood fleas my way, and it's kind of like the movie Wall Street, you know. I felt like Gecko. I was losing my mind. I'm sitting here looking at my stocks. I'm con they're constantly in the red. You know, I'm, I'm reporting negative earnings. I, I can't be doing that. You know, I'm, I'm a bowler in this league. <laughs> you know, but unfortunately, unfortunately, my grandfather didn't bag this elephant, and uh, I sold these stocks, got rid of them, and uh, that's my presentation. Any Anyone have any questions for Tommy? I have, a, I have a couple. <laughs> uh, Tom, you mentioned that JetBlue uh, split three for two, and that was your big news story. Why did it go down? What was the big news? What was pulling it down? It's just they had uh, their, their fares were low, so a lot of people thought there was something wrong with the company. Mm -hmm. Like it was kind of like the Blue Star thing that was going on. Right. In the movie, there's the, the prices for fuel shot up, which okay. caused the stock to go down. Uh huh. And the fare the fare prices went down. So a lot of people weren't buying, JetBlue weren't flying it, and mm -hmm. it just caused a big problem. Next question, sir. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned why you bought Pfizer because of the Viagra drug. Um, did you think that there was going to be a sudden increase in the use of Viagra? Well, I, I mean, it's I been out for a couple of years. It has, it has. But, you know, every time I turn on ESPN, there's Rafael Palmero mm -hmm. hitting the baseball and scooping it in. It's like Viagra, you know, he's like, I, I, I do it on the diamond in both places. You know, mm -hmm. That shows a diamond. Mm -hmm. I figure, you know, people, plus the playoffs came along, so they showed that commercial all the time. I figured a lot of old people were going to go out and get Viagra. And some young people like to use it too. Mm. I'm not okay. going to explain why. <laughs> okay, great. Well, I, I liked your overheads. I thought you were real well dressed. One suggestion I would make is not to chew gum when you're speaking publicly. Chew gum? Were you before? No. Uh, yeah. Just, I bite my tongue. Oh, okay. Yeah. No questions for Tom. I was giving up for Mr. Cole. The scoop sucks, and I was the uh, class lagger for most of the time. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to get into uh, my holdings. Influence Systems Inc. I'll talk about what it is in a second. Nvidia Corp., which is a semiconductor uh, uh, technology company. Jeff Luares, which Tommy just talked about. Ebay, Inc., which a lot of you probably know about, and uh, Gateway. Uh, just try to keep in mind the, the market that each one of those stocks is in because it's going to be important when we start talking about the relative strength of each of those stocks and you should they respect the markets. Uh, first, we're going to talk about Influence Systems. That's the logo. A little background information. It's a biopharmaceutical company developing uh, medicines in the area of oncology. Oncology is the study of like curing tumors or cancer which has become uh, really big in the past 10 years. It was founded in 1984 and 1986, opened its first lab in New York City. And its early interest was um, in treating infectious diseases like you know, an ear infection <coughs> or if a cut you have gets infected. But then later on, 
it began to focus more on oncology, I think, in the, in the 90s when cancer really started becoming a major deal and the death rates uh, began to rise drastically. Uh, the reasoning behind the purchase, the release of new drugs, they actually have a new drug, which I'll talk about in a second, called Herbitux, which they're uh, going to be selling in Europe early next year, and news about the drug really uh, affected how the stock performed during the three-month period. And also its recent rise, uh, which you'll see in a second. Uh, you can see that its buying price is really close to its 50-week, 52-week uh, high-low. So I, th I figured that uh, at some point during the three-month period, it'd probably exceed its high of the, of the one-year period. Um, you can see the P ratio and the market cap there. Uh, all right, so now let's talk about performance. In the red, you're going to see how uh, the NASDAQ market did during the three-month period. The arrow signifies where it started. I, the graph doesn't exactly start on the 16th. Uh, the blue line is for implant technologies. So as you can see, uh, in a fairly bullish market, implant didn't have such great relative strength for the most part. It was in the down to about 30% from its original price. Reasoning, uh, a couple reasons why it started dipping in the beginning. Uh, one was legal issues. Uh, they had several uh, lawsuits filed against them at the beginning of you know, the three month period regarding, regarding taxes. They didn't get into too much detail about them. And also, Martha Stewart, if you know, some of you know, Implone is the stock that uh, Martha Stewart is known for uh, short selling uh, a while ago. And, news is, and there's been uh, Harlan Waskell, which is the former CEO of the company, has been in the news a lot. About his, uh, about his trial in terms of whether he'll be convicted of uh, you know, insider trading. And whenever it seemed that whenever his, new, his name popped into the news, uh, the stock just plummeted. But then you can see that there's a steady rise uh, later on toward uh, the approach December. And that's because Herbitux began, get, kept on jumping in the news more and more. Uh, they started talking about how more and more European countries were going to put it in their markets early, uh, starting early next year and then how there were such high hopes for it. So that really helped the stock. So as you can see, the news for Implone really affected uh, kind of uh, how it did in the three-month period. NVIDIA. Uh, so basically, it, it deals with uh, like semiconductors and graphics processors and video games, computers, things that you know we all uh, deal with it every, every day. It started in 1993. It started in Santa Clara, California. A lot of the video games places and technology places are in California. Uh, so that's where it started. Uh, 2000, it was chosen as a graphics processor for Xbox. That's kind of uh, one reason why I picked the stock, because when Xbox became popular, I think the stock really took off. It was added to the NASDAQ in May 2001. You can see uh, not too long after <coughs> Xbox chose it uh, for business. Reasons for purchase. Uh, just those two reasons. And you can see the stats here. Once again, the buying price a little bit below is 52 week high low. So I thought there you know, could be a little room for improvement. Uh, as you can see, the PG P ratio wasn't too high. So I didn't think there was too much threat involved in, uh, in purchasing the stock. So let's look at how it did. Once again, this, this stock is also in the NASDAQ market. So you can see the same NASDAQ uh, chart. And the video, you can see here, took a huge plummet early on. And that's because its big competitor, ATI Technologies, the way that uh, the performance of NVIDIA is really measured is against its main competitor, ATI Technologies. And when, they, uh, when NVIDIA released uh, profits that were lagging in comparison to ATIs, the stock just, just took a, a big shot. Um, but then you can see later on, uh, when NVIDIA announced its third quarter earnings uh, in the middle of November, the stock just shot up and, even, and went just right when about from 16 to 21 in a matter of a couple days. So once again, the news of this stock, especially earnings reports, really affect how uh, the price of the stock does. And overall, you can see that there's a little more relative strength. The video ended up about 10% above its original buying price that I bought it out on the 16th. Jeff Luares, you probably know a lot about it already, but I'll give you a little background info that some people probably haven't had. It was started by this guy, David Nealman, in 2000 as a low fare airline, uh, low fare airline in New York City. Um, he had owned two airlines prior to this, uh, I don't really know the names, but he was pretty well experienced in the business beforehand. The first flight with JFK to Florida, New York City based. And now it has serves 22 U.S. cities with 47 um, of the most uh, modern technological uh, airplanes. Uh, I thought I'd talk about a little about his business philosophy. The Newman philosophy is uh, the success of high quality and low fares. His whole philosophy is, is that if you use new planes, which would require uh, less fuel fare and less maintenance fare, that he'd be able to make a, a greater profit. 
than if you used older, cheaper planes that would need more maintenance and more monthly payments. And uh, the low fares, you would thought, would attract a great audience, or a great um, uh, market, and it really has. So reasons for personal, <coughs> positive word of mouth. Everyone I talked to, I've actually never been on a JetBlue plane, but everyone I've talked to said that they, it's been a very enjoyable ride and growing popularity. So you can see some of the stats. Once again, very close to its 52 high week low. Probably, <coughs> if I look back, probably would have been a mistake to buy it. We'll get into it in a second. Uh, so here, once again, in the NASDAQ uh, market, the line is where it starts. It reaches its all-time high around above 60 when it jumped about 20% from its original price in, I guess, probably end of September, beginning of October. Um, but then, as you've probably heard before, lawsuits start, started to hit regarding them releasing information to certain government agencies about some of their clients. And then, I guess, what the company tried to do is hoping that a split would maybe sort of revive some of their problems. So on, at, um, so on the 21st of November, they split three to two, meaning that um, for every two shares that an owner had, they now own three. So the stock went down uh, according to that. And uh, basically, the stock, the split, on it, the split on it caused an automatic short rise, but in the long run, it just caused the jet blue to plummet all the way down to the end of December. As you can see, it got it flirted with the, uh, losing about 40% of its value during the uh, three-month period. Now again, eBay. It was founded by, by this guy, Mayor Omidyar, Pierre Omidyar in 95. It started out as a hobby. I think um, Mr. Green talked about it a while ago. It was something for his wife to, <coughs> to sell certain things on the internet. It has dispensers. Yeah, and then now it became a huge global uh, thing. Their whole, the big thing that their company stretches is safety, is having a relationship between the buyer and the customer, uh, between the buyer <coughs> and the seller, and the, the, in the, the actual program itself and the customers who use it. So they established their, their own safe harbor, um, a customer support team for safe trading environment. Basically, they expanded so much that they now have their own uh, safety system that they've, applied, that they've uh, used on the website. Reasons for purchase. Um, the big thing that I had seen in the news was that now eBay was not just being used by private individuals, but by big businesses as well. Business transactions were starting to go through on eBay. So I thought that would really cause the stock to shoot up. Also, <coughs> popularity. I thought that this of all stocks, which it ended up being, was going to be my uh, blue chip-like stock, one that would be dependable and that would, uh, that would sort of go with the flow of the market, uh, which you'll see right now. And just a little bit about stats. Its P/E ratio is a little bit high, uh, which bothered me a little bit, seeing that it might be over the um, too much trading going on with it. But I figured it was a popular stock and its value would still hold. And once again, its buying price was a little bit below its 52-week high low, so it's been seeing some increases of uh, late. It, reached, it nearly reached its all-time high uh, when we were looking at the beginning of October. And uh, as you can see there, it took a little dip. Probably uh, holders became, became fearful of, of what were supposed to come. Uh, and here toward the end of November is another example of how the news affects uh, the stock's performance. Uh, the thing with Omidyar is that now he's a full-time philanthropist. And when news got out that he funded an Oxford uh, Ethical Business Center, uh, the stock just shot up in one day. And you know, once again, philanthropy, good earnings, you know, things like this really, uh, more than anything, help the way a stock performs. Uh, Gateway. It was founded uh, in '85. It's the <coughs> oldest of all my stocks. In an Iowa farmhouse, with a thousand, with a $10,000 loan for his grandmother. So he started small, and now there's gateways all over the country. I thought this was. Uh, pretty interesting. I always wondered why they used, uh, you know, the cow boxes. And they started them in 1991 to pay homage to their uh, farm roots, just in case you guys were wondering. And they moved from, to, from the NASDAQ to the New York Stock Exchange in 97. This is, one, this is my only stock that's in the uh, uh, down jokes market. Readings for purchase, expansion into electronic industry. There's been a lot of news about how Gateway has just been known for making uh, computers, but now they're making plasma TVs, they're making more electronics hoping to compete with some of those big businesses in that industry. Uh, and some of its stats. Uh, it was the lowest of all my market caps in terms of all the stocks that I own. Um, not quite a penny stock, but its buying price is fairly low, somewhat close to its high. Once again, also seem to be experiencing uh, some increases as of late. Now let's get into how it performed. Uh, as you can see, it didn't do too well. 
Uh, once again, they reported third quarter losses worse than third quarter losses worse than Wall Street's projections, and that caused the stock to, to plummet. And it's pretty much dictated how it was going to do for the rest of the uh, for the rest of the three month period. All right, so let's get into final graph and statistics. There's my uh, final tracking graph, as you can see. Uh, wavered back and forth once again based on the news. Uh, you can see the big dive at the end was primarily because of JetBlue. And uh, big dives in the beginning of, uh, were because of inflow. Uh, it probably was, you could call it probably a dog with fleas between its, uh, between its lawsuits and the Martha Stewart uh, and uh, last little news uh, going around. It really uh, took a hit. But once again, more news brought it back uh, into the limelight. Uh, so my final value of portfolio is 88000 Yeah, not too good. Uh, that was my net loss. And uh, if we're talking about uh, dinner with Coach, I didn't even come close. <laughs> but I still enjoyed uh, doing the project. I learned a lot. And uh, if I had to invest again, I probably would. I might be a little bit smarter on what I invest in. Uh, I really thought that some of my stocks would go up. Uh, you know, I put, I actually, for, with Implone, I thought that that was going to be my riskiest stock, whether it was going to, I knew it was going to either go down a lot or go up a lot, which it actually did both. Um, and I put my most money, I put almost 23000 in that one, hoping that it would go up the most and really didn't, which caused, which really uh, sort of highlighted my losses and my final value. And uh, that's it. Well, because they're, 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 the drugs that they were selling in Europe were known to be some of the most successful, or they had the most um, hope, you know, they had the most potential, supposedly, than any others that were in the market. And figuring that this name was already so popular, whether it was, you know, good popularity or bad popularity, its name is already out there. And the fact that its products were supposed to be so good, I figured that it may cause the stock to jump. Also, it had jumped quite a bit uh, in the last 52 weeks. It was, it was actually on the rise when I bought it. Um, so yeah, but you're right, it was a risky investment. Do you use eBay, and if so, do you feel comfortable that you're going to get the product shipped to you in good quality condition? I do not use eBay, but I know a lot of people, a lot of my people in my family use eBay, um, and they feel very comfortable. I mean, uh, tickets for games, um, furniture, you know, everything. Uh, and I think what I thought that... Uh, confirmed the fact that it was such a stable and dependable uh, industry was because more businesses are starting to use it. Bottom line is if you start, if uh, private businesses started using it, you know, more and more, you know, capital is going to be crossing, you know, the, the line. So they must obviously have faith in it. So there's no reason why I guess uh, everyone else shouldn't. Yeah. Ironically, a lot of your stocks have done well since the right. tournament ended. Yeah. Uh, NVIDIA yesterday was up like 6%. Yeah. So it's funny how sometimes these things go. And Adam's, you know, a great example of someone who shows you don't have to earn a lot of money in your portfolio to do well on the project. I told you I've had people who didn't do so well who won the free dinner, and then I've had people who uh, got 98s on this project and took last place in terms of how much money they earned. What's that? No, I haven't created this project yet. All right, well, let's give it up for Adam last time.
That's the only bet. Uh, they also have, they sell Aquafina, you know the water? Yeah. Aquafina water and juices and the rolled gold pretzels. So. Gator. That's what they have. Um, pretzels. It started in, in Newport, North Carolina in a pharmacy by Kelly Bradham. And his aim was to create a drink that was delicious and that that was delicious, helpful, and aiding in digesting and boosting energy. I don't know, that was an aid. But, yeah, it did pretty well in this stuff. I bought eBay, which I've already told you about, so it's just a little sticks to see here. I chose eBay because a lot of my friends and family shop there and they say it's like less expensive than if you buy it like, at a regular store, so I just took their word for it. And as Adam has said, it was founded by Pierre Oled, oh, Pierre, or something like that, and in September 1995. And it was meant to be a marketplace for the sale of goods and services for individuals. So, and my next stop was Wachovia. I know a lot of people had Wachovia here, like Freddie Bear over there. But I couldn't find it still before I got a PK. <laughs> And those are just a little statistics. I picked this back because my mom told me. And also, Alan told me to buy it because it'd probably be profitable. So I took his word for it. And I bought it. It was all right. It, and that was right. It did all right. It was in. It did all right. Um, it opened in North Carolina in 1879. And its first name was Wachovia National Bank. And then 14 years later, Wachovia loan and trust open nearby. So then the came the name came from a Latin from the Latin name Wakao, which is in connection to the West Wakao Valley in the Danube River. So they just got their name from there. And then um Wakovia Loan and Trust and the Wakovia National Bank formed into Wakovia Corp. And then First Union um, decided to like join with Okoya Corp and then First Union just changed it to Okoya Corp later. So that's just Okoya Corp and First Union. I'm pretty sure you guys heard of First Union before, right? Did they? No? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And that's just the PE ratio and the market cap. And the next stock was Nike. Now this, this stock <coughs> was the best stock that I had. It made a lot of money. As you can see, I bought stock because who wears Nike here? Who has at least one pair of Nike? At least one pair. See, that's a lot of people. And I wear Nike, so I bought it because I thought I would make a big profit. And I did. And I bought it at $56. And see, that's the door right there. That was my bullish stock. Now, some interesting things about Nike that you probably didn't know. Um, Nike got their name from the the Greek god named Nike, and she was the, the god of victory. So they picked it because, you know, the shoes would probably give people runners, like, like they'd win stuff, and so they always get victory, so they named it after that. And the logo, you know, the swoosh, you know, the little the check, change, the check um, it embodies the spirit of the, of the goddess. So they made it because, I guess, I don't know, just embodies that. Um, he began, his name was Phil Knight, he began, um, Nike in the back of his trunk. So it was just a small distributing, like he just used to make it in the back of his trunk. And his inspiration for making the, the shoe was he used to run track. So his coach said he wanted better shoes for his runners. So one day, since he was in college, he had to, um, he had to like make up a business plan for a class and make up a business. So it just started off from there. And then the logo, the Nike logo, he didn't make it up. It was a, a lady named Carol, Carolyn, something. And he sold it to her for like $35. And then the, sh the first Nike shoe with the Nike check was introduced in 1992. Oh, with the Swiss. Yeah, with the Nike check yeah. on it. Yeah, so that was Nike. And that was the logo. The last stock I did was Exxon. Now, I thought Exxon was going to make me a lot of money because, you know, gas is going up and people are always driving around and they need gas, right? 
So I thought it was going to go up. I was really wrong because it did not. This is my, this is my daughter with fleas, with a lot of fleas. <laughs> I went down so much. I lost, my portfolio went down because of it. See, I chose it because I thought it was a necessity. A lot of people consider gas as, as a necessity, although there are no necessities, they're just wants, but they consider them a necessity. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, $37, it has to go up. It didn't go up. <laughs> and there is my bear. Bear, because it was my bad stock. And that's the end of my presentation.